given the diversity of disciplines where people come from, I actually think that I found personally that there are several commonalities and sometimes we don't realize that we have it. I think it was a privilege to be able to participate with such a high caliber group that ranged from funders to policy makers and behavioral scientists and biomedical scientists and uh, statistical methods experts. And I've certainly found it a really productive and a good learning experience for me. Everybody had different ideas that were so valuable and meshed so well. I came to the meeting thinking that my perspective on on health communication evidence might not be appreciated by so many people, but in fact I, I felt quite embraced by it. We're all doing good work and want the same outcomes, mm -hmm. so it's a matter of getting together and, and working together. I think that the message has come through loud and clear that health communication interventions are part and parcel of any comprehensive programs. Although not a complete surprise is that there's a lot of published articles, I think there's a lot of programs and projects and activities going on that don't self-identify as health communication. And so I think there's a broad array of evidence, experience, lessons learned that we're not capturing because of the different labeling and the different disciplines using different semantics. That makes it incumbent upon us, behavioral scientists, health communication uh, researchers, to do a better job of uh, explaining with, with as strong evidence as we can possibly present uh, the significant role that health communication does have. So there's a lot of concern that there isn't enough, let's say, traditional scientific method and rigor applied to health communications. There is need to systematically um, put together uh, whatever information is out there so that you can have this body of information uh, which people can then read about. I think the evidence is there. I think in terms of health communication, we're not as good about um, disseminating it properly um, in terms of peer review publications and um, really making the case that, that this works for the skeptics. I think that um, there are messages that we can get out to other researchers, to other program managers, uh, and to other people who are broadly interested in HIV and AIDS, stakeholders who are very committed to uh, doing something about this epidemic around the world. We have concrete steps about publications that I hope will settle some of these issues once and for all. We came up with a list of potential journal articles uh, to put into a supplement to a journal. I think I volunteered for a couple of those. So once more of this information is being published, then a lot of people will consider that more rigorous evidence that, that um, health communication is effective. We have to keep in mind that while uh, you're uh, watching this video today, one or more people will uh, unfortunately pass away from HIV, and there's a tremendous urgency still in this epidemic. We have to use every bit of evidence we have to make the biggest change we can as quickly as possible. Urgency is something we need to always keep in mind.